Hey friends, Amanda here, Bare Bones Living. Welcome back. And I thought I'd give you guys a quick little update on what our chick and turkey uh, setups have turned out looking like. You guys haven't seen either one of these flocks. We have them now separated into two separate flocks, but the last time you guys saw them, they were little babies in our shed in the brooder. Um, and I think at that point they were probably around three weeks old um, and now they're about I think the chickens are about 15 to 16 weeks old maybe 15 weeks old and I think the turkeys are 13 to 14 weeks old somewhere along those lines I don't exactly remember but I thought I'd give you a quick update so we'll start over here with the chickens and Right now, they are in this Siskovich tractor. This is our second Siskovich tractor that Mike has built. Um, and we, we really like how it works out for having a lot of young birds. Uh, so we built another one. We are planning on also building a chickshaw, but with having them still young, we were a little afraid of them like it not, the chickshaw maybe not, might not work as well for such young birds. They're, they're bigger now and they probably wouldn't have any kind of issue with it. But we had them in this A-frame that we built in Illinois. And this is what our original six chickens were living in at my dad's house. And it's heavy as heck. And it's totally falling apart. But this is where we originally moved them out of the brooder too. But because there's like 22 chickens, I think, in there, they filled up this A-frame really, really fast and they needed space immediately. Um, and so then at that age, they were too small to go into what we thought, or we, what we thought would be too small for a chick shaw. So Mike built another Siskovich tractor and it's a hot day out so they're all under the shade of the tractor. They're so funny. Chickens are so chicken. I walked over here and they all just got the willies. But they're all hanging out in here in the shade. And like I said, I think there's maybe 22 of them in there. Now they'll come out. But they are growing nicely. Getting bigger. These these are the Bielefelder females. They're definitely our most inquisitive birds. But yeah, the, look at the size of those females. They're they're huge. Let me see if I can get them all to come out here so we can actually see them better. Look at that be the Felder rooster right there. Look how big he is. Ginormous. So we have, if you guys will remember, we got two Bielefelder roosters. I'm hoping that the lighting is okay in here. And you can see the big one, you know, that's coming around here. And you can see the other one is back there. He is like a quarter of the size of this one. It's ridiculous. Um, so we actually put a band on him just in case uh, his brother over there ends up being as big as him at some point. We like how big this big boy is, how fast he got big. So for breeding purposes we want to identify that. Uh, you'll also see here that this is my splash, my red-blue wine dot, or not my splash, my blue lace red wine dot. Is that, that's what that is. The other one that was supposed to be a blue lace red wine dot is actually a gold wine dot. I don't know if she's in here or out. Uh, 
And there she is. Yeah, she's right there. She is actually a golden wine dot. So we got one blue lace red and one golden. And then you can see our silver. We got we did get two silvers, but those were easy to tell that we got two silvers. Uh that brown one back there, and then there's another brown one back there. Ooh, I don't know if you can see it. There it is. That one right there. Those two are olive eggers, and then we got the red, one red back there, and the other, the other red is back there, Rhode Island reds. Those are pretty easy to tell now that they've grown up a little bit. It was, we were losing the, the olive eggers in with the, uh, when they were when they were chicks, they were hard to tell the difference between the olive eggers, the reds. They kind of just all looked the same. Even the Bielefelders looked pretty much the same until they really got going. But what I have noticed is you see these see these bards back here. There's a really dark bard right there. There's a really dark bard over there too, but then we got these lighter bards here. And I know that we have one rooster, one for sure barred rooster. And we banded him as well because, oh there, he's actually right outside of the coop right there is our one barred rooster that we know for sure. And he was very clearly a bigger bird, very clearly a rooster from the get-go. Now like this, this light colored bard here and that light colored bard there, they're much bigger than these smaller black ones. And I was thinking that they might not be bards. These dark ones might not be bards. Maybe they were like Dominiques or something like that. But we got them from Murray McMurray and I can't imagine that they would uh, screw up like that. So now I'm starting to think that these bigger ones are all roosters. These, these, they're, I mean, they're larger and they're lighter in color. And when you look up bards, I've raised bards before, but I've only raised hens before, so I didn't have anything to compare it with. But these look very much different than each other. I mean, they're about to be right next to each other there, and you can see how different they look. So, what do you guys think? Are, those, are all these bigger, lighter colored birds roosters? And so I have four roosters and three hens. Are all these smaller, darker bards hens? I'm not totally sure. I'm not sold. I don't know. So we have them here in this Siskovich tractor. We have them in their own enclosure. Their own Premier One chicken netting. And then they are able to come and go from the tractor to graze in the yard. We do need to move this fencing to give them some fresh grass, but they are sharing an energizer with the turkeys that I will show you now. So here we have our turkeys. And Mike had originally built this enclosure for our guineas when they were being total bullies and picking on our chickens and making us really angry. We tried to move them out here and they were just not having it and they would just fly out and go back to the coop. So we have abandoned that and left this up. And now we're, we've converted it over to a turkey hut. Uh, Mike converted it by cutting out this wall and giving them a clear, uh, this clear corrugated plastic to let in light and so you can kind of see out of it. Uh, and then he took off one of the sides to help with ventilation and really the turkeys A need ventilation and B they like to see out. And then he put in 
some nice big roost bars for them because they're just so so much bigger of birds. They got really big feet. So he got wider roost bars for the turkeys. But you will notice that we only have five turkeys here. And I'm pretty sure we have four toms and one hen. Um, I'm definitely sure that we have at least three toms. These three are definitely toms. I'm not totally sold on the fourth tom. And I know that one of them is a female. Um, actually, that fem the female might be the one in the back there. I think that's, yeah, that's the female in the back. So I don't know if this other one is just a smaller tom. Um, it's hard to tell. They're still too young. Um, and I think, I'm pretty sure that we have four toms and one female. We had six turkeys. We started out with six turkeys. And if you guys caught our live on the 4th of July, when I was on my live, right before I got off, I said I had to go and release, get a turkey out of the net. Well... She, it was apparently our female, one of our females, jumped over, and they, they go, they jump into the chicken enclosure often, and we've never had an issue, um, but apparently she got spooked, and she ran into this, they, they don't actually share uh nettings here the turkeys have their own netting but so that it's double pane here those are not actually touching each other there's a little gap and she got her head stuck in there and she suffocated unfortunately and it was completely devastating of course you know it had to be one of our females we only have two females and of course it had to be a female that met such an unfortunate demise. Um, so now we have the four males and the one female and we are looking into putting up a more permanent, more rigid fence because as you can see this is kind of loosey-goosey. Um, and so what happened is she got her head in there and then she started thrashing around and it unfortunately wrapped around her neck. Um, and the more she panicked and the more she thrashed, the more she got tangled. Um, so I'm wanting to put up a more permanent, rigid chicken wire fence so that even if they decide to fly over it, if they put their head through it, it's not going to flap over and around their neck. And they won't so easily get caught up in that. But other than that, we haven't had any issues with fighting between the birds, even though they can get to each other very easily. I don't know what happened. If you were on my live, I, didn't, I wasn't freaked out that the chicken got in there. I was like, oh, great, here we go. I got to go get her out now. Or go get a get a turkey out now. I wasn't really nervous about it. And little did I know what was what was happening. Um and we don't usually have any issues with having these birds right next to each other. They don't fight through the nets or anything like that. But the turkeys are growing nicely. Because we have so many toms, we will be thinning the herd of toms, and we'll have a Thanksgiving bird and probably a Christmas bird.
And then we'll hope that next spring we'll get some chicks from them, from our lone, our lone girl, poor thing. So as with anything, you know, practices are always changing, things are evolving. This is where we're at right now. I've been meaning to keep you guys up to date better than this. There's been a, a big gap in between when you guys first saw them and now, but better now than never, right? And this is where they're at currently. Uh, like I said, we're trying to figure out a little bit of a better situation. Um, we're kind of running low on energizers. And if we get a permanent fence around the turkeys, then we can make this flock of chickens a lot more mobile. That would be nice. Um, Mike's also thinking about maybe altering uh, the turkey hut a little bit more and taking this other side wall down to increase the ventilation. Um, we also need to get them more bedding. We have tons of grass that we can chop and dry and use as bedding. Um, but this is just where we're at right now. So I thought I'd give you guys a little peek at what was going on and bring you guys up to date. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you guys for stopping by today and joining in on our journey here at Bourbon's Living. We'll catch you on the next one.